Hey guys, how you doing? I thought I'd do a timeline video of the Korean crisis that we have going on right now, just to give us a little bit more uh, clarity of what's going on, uh, what events have led up to the point that we are currently at, and then at the end of the video, I'll, I'll give my prediction of what I believe will happen, uh, you know, in the coming days, weeks, and possibly the coming months. Right on the heels of Donald Trump becoming the U.S. president, February 12th, North Korea says it successfully tested a new ballistic missile, the Pukutsong-2. Its range is supposed to be 1,200 to 2,000 kilometers. Japan automatically comes out and saying it's, it's absolutely intolerable. Uh, U.S. backs Japan 100% in this. Trump, President Trump comes out and states that North Korea will be a top priority. Uh, you know, he believes that North Korea has gone too far too long and past administrations haven't done enough enough to stop North Korea and, and so this test it marks the first of many that Trump has to deal with less than a month later March 6 North Korea fires four ballistic missiles three that landed near Japanese waters uh, the missiles flew for about a thousand kilometers North Korea stated they came out and stated that they were simulating strikes on US military bases in Japan so things started to you know, really uh, ramp up here. Weapons, weapons experts came out and stated that North Korea's weapons program is developing faster than they previously thought. So it made, you know, Trump and his administration think even more, hey guys, we, we got to do something about this. These missile tests also do another thing. They escalate the conversation of deploying the THAAD system in South Korea to deter North Korea from these uh, missile tests, from these nuclear ambitions, to deter uh, maybe a possible preemptive strike on North Korea's side. The war rhetoric between Trump and North Korea starts to escalate. Trump states that China is the key player to stop North Korea. We need China on board to stop North Korea because past administrations, their sanctions have not worked and they have not worked because of China. China is like a loophole to North Korea and these missile tests are just escalating the conflict faster and faster. With tensions increasing more and more, the USS Carl Vincent strike group is sent to the Sea of Japan. April 29th, uh, the strike group reaches the Sea of Japan. It's a show of force to North Korea. Trump says that North Korea is a problem that will get solved. And he, he says very much that military option is, is very much on the table. The same comes from General McMaster, from uh, UN Ambassador Nikki Haley. Uh, everyone seems to be pointing towards a broader conflict in the Korean Peninsula. These, these drills with the U.S. and South Korea do not make the, the situation any better. It, it really rattles Kim Jong-un's cage. North Korea comes out uh, with a slew of rhetoric talking about the, the brink of nuclear war between U.S. and North Korea. At this point, we don't know definitively where China and Russia stand on the North Korean crisis in, in the region. Uh, apparently, China stops the import of coal uh, from North Korea, which, it, you know, when they did, that's a, that's a big hit to North Korea. That was one of their biggest exports was this coal to China. But both China and Russia seem to be calming, calling for calm from all sides. They, they don't seem to be pointing the finger at North Korea. Uh, as the bad guy, as the aggressor, uh, and one of the biggest reasons are these yearly drills that are done by the U.S. and South Korea on, on the Korean Peninsula. At this point, it's April, and the North Korean's missile program seems to take a hit with several different failures. Uh, there's some that believe that the missile systems were actually hacked by the United States to cause these failures. It was April 5th, 16th, and 29th. During the meeting with uh, Trump and President Xi, Trump orders a strike on a Syrian Air Force base that they believe uh, that a chemical attack c came from. Most likely it was a false flag, but it was a sending a message to China about North Korea that the U.S. is willing to act on North Korea if China does not get on board. May 10th, the liberal Moon Jae-in uh, steps in as president of South Korea. He runs on a platform that he wants better ties to North Korea. He believes that North Korea's rightful leader is Kim Jong-un and, and that South Korea kind of needs to deal uh, with that fact. But less than a week later, he states that a conflict with North Korea is, is highly likely and, and that's because of the big missile test that happens May 14th. This missile test on May 14th is North Korea's most successful yet. North Korean state media uh, claimed that the new Hwasong-12 
12 missile reached an altitude, altitude of 1,312 miles. It was confirmed that it was the highest out of all Pyongyang's missile tests that they conducted that year. And that's important because the higher the missile goes, the, the further the missile would be able to travel. Uh, so uh, analysts confirmed that the new North Korean missile could in indeed reach U.S. Pacific military bases in the area. The missile splashed down pretty close to Russia, which made President Vladimir Putin put his air force on high alert. So it, it was one of the first times that we saw Putin act in maybe a negative connotation towards North Korea. Now I believe this missile test was really a breaking point. It was it was a crossing of the red line. We we had a lot of US military assets in the region at this time. Russian troops were on the border with North Korea. Chinese troops were on the border with North Korea. We just didn't we don't know where China and Russia stood because even after this test they they didn't really demonize North Korea. After this test, we saw Kim Jong-un order his military to mass-produce missiles. We already believe they have around 1,000 short, medium, and long-range missiles in their arsenal. And, and so this was definitely a breaking point. This is definitely a, a point where U.S. started to ratchet up th their warmongering. In response to this missile test, uh, Donald Trump, the Trump administration, sent the USS Ronald Reagan to join the USS Carl Vinson in, in Korean waters. To, 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 it's more of a, a deterrence to North Korea because of this missile test. Experts came out and stated that this missile test you know, it proved that the missile program in North Korea was far more efficient than they previously thought. And so it really had the U.S. on their heels uh, thinking... Well, you know, wow, this may be a situation that we need to deal with a lot faster than we previously thought. And North Korea could be a lot, you know, a lot further along to being able to strike the U.S. mainland uh, than we previously, uh, you know, believed. But this did not seem to deter Kim Jong Un as the missile tests kept coming. They kept they kept happening, which you know. Just recently, this past weekend, we've got word that the U.S. is now sending a third strike group, a third aircraft carrier to Korean waters. We have the USS Nimitz now coming uh, to join the U.S. Carl Vinson and the USS uh, Ronald Reagan in Korean waters. So the situation is not dying down here. It's not calming. And in the past, the situation would have calmed uh, at this point, but it seems like it's just escalating and escalating. And at this point, we're at present day, and it really seems like we've reached a breaking point when it comes to North Korea. Uh, if, you know, bombs stop, start dropping, uh, World War III, they would have dated, you know, the start date for World War III would, would have happened probably months ago. Uh, we, we don't know exactly where China and Russia stand. Uh, they still have military assets on the border with North Korea. Uh, you know, we've different theories of why. Uh, a lot of people believe it, it could be because of a potential U.S. strike on North Korea and, and for them to deal with refugees. Uh, but uh, all we do know is that, you know, Kim Jong-un hasn't seemed to want to stop these missile tests. Uh, both North Korea and the U.S. and South Korea have stated that they, you know, they would be able to come to the table and, and deal with this diplomatically, but only if certain, uh, you know, steps were taken. And each side's not going to st take these steps. North Korea wants the U.S. Uh, military assets out of the region, and the U.S. and South Korea want North Korea to stop with their missile tests, with their nuclear program. And these are just things that aren't going to happen. The newly elected President Moon of South Korea, he, he seemed very liberal. Uh, he ran on a platform where he wanted to diplomatically and peacefully deal with North Korea, but that almost immediately changed. And now he's saying North Korean uh, North Korean w uh, war is you know highly likely. We see more and more South Korean military assets uh, heading towards the border. The the that system still in uh, you know. Uh, South Korea, China doesn't seem to want that at all. Uh, the China, the China, South China Sea, uh, it, you know, issue is still very big. Uh, China and the U.S. don't seem to agree on that. Uh, Japan is, is, you know, they're kind of getting on their last nerve because the, these missile tests, a lot of them are landing uh, within the economic zone of Japanese waters, and, and uh, you know, Abe of of Japan, he's he's just not happy about it. And he stated that the U.S. and Japan are going to take concrete action uh, against North Korea. 
so we're we're at a cross uh, you know crossroads now like we're we're at a breaking point here with the North Korean situation Kim Jong Un's not going to stop Donald Trump stated that he he will deal with the situation we've seen you know that he's willing to drop bombs he's willing to strike uh, it's just a pretty scary situation all in all the globalist push for World War III is in full effect. I don't think that China is necessarily on our side. I think that's going to make Trump act. You know, I think we're, we may strike North Korea in the next couple weeks. Their missile tests are not going to stop. Uh, tr Trump is kind of on his last n nerve here. General, General Matus came out and s said that you know a war with North Korea would be catastrophic, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to strike. The Trump administration has been very clear that the military option is on the table, and I really think in the coming weeks we might see that actually play out. After this latest test, Kim Jong-un and North Korea came out and said that they have an even bigger gift for the United States. That, that may be a nuclear test, and at that point, uh, that might cross a red line for the Trump administration. So, so once again, I, d I definitely think that in the coming weeks, something might pop off. We might see a false flag, especially with three strike groups in the area. It's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. And as updates come out, I will continue to update you guys. Uh, more and more but guys tell me what you think tell me what you think is going to happen in the next coming days weeks months uh, let me know have a discussion about it uh, but until until next time until something else pops off uh, i'll see you guys later